Good morning. This is the last morning that I get to say I am one of the two Pastor Steves here at this church. I know, I totally agree with you on that. Uh, for those who might be new today, uh, we are taking time today to honor our Pastor Steve Brownson, who is retiring today for some unknown reason. Uh, and we are taking time to honor him and all that he has done for us in ministry. So there is uh, going to be lots of time for us to cry throughout worship. Just get ready. Uh, and lots of time for us to sing and to honor him. And we invite you to come over into the Fellowship Hall after worship. Lots of wonderful food. Uh, make your own street tacos. Make your own ice cream sundaes. We are doing it up right uh, today. Um, his family has come to be with us, and you will get introduced to them a little bit later, but we are grateful to have all of you here with us. There are lots of announcements and things going on in the life of the church. I'm going to trust that you're going to read through the bulletin and get all of those. This morning, several people have come to me to ask, where are our 2019 offering envelopes? We're not using them. Um, so with all of the new computer system that we have for the church we actually don't need them and they're actually less efficient for us and they cost quite a bit of money um, so if you are a check writer all you need to do is drop your check into the offering plate uh, or if you do the mail-in that's fine as well the computer system then scans the check and it does everything for us it's really quite amazing if you are a cash giver, there are envelopes, of course, in the pews for you, the pew envelopes. And if you're a check writer and you still feel more comfortable with envelopes, we'll make sure you get them, or you can use those pew envelopes on any time. You, you don't need to worry about the old envelope number that us Presbyterians who've grown up Presbyterian forever need to remember that we're number 382, and my family has had 382 for four generations, and so we need to have 382. Um, you don't need to have that anymore. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Um, I know that makes some of you scared, but I promise you it's a really wonderful, wonderful system. Your 2018 giving statements will be out in a couple of weeks. We still have a few things in the books that have to be closed, and those will be out for you for your IRS records very soon. We'll make sure that you have those. Um, so I think that's it on announcements today because we have so much else to celebrate. Let's take a moment now to get ourselves really into this presence of God in worship. I invite you to take this moment just on your own to center yourself in prayer and open yourself to God's presence that's already with us. Let's each on our own be in prayer. One other announcement, well, two, okay. Uh, the poinsettias that are left after worship, you are welcome to rescue them and take them home with you, as many as you want. Otherwise, they're going to be gone uh, this week. So you're welcome to take as many poinsettias as you would like today. The opening hymn is number 482 for those who like to follow along in the blue hymn book. Let's rise and sing our praise to God, hymn 482. Oh my. 
Thank you, God, for the January rain. The rains that some of us in this room think are the cries of heaven because of Pastor Brownson's retirement. <laughs> but will bring us the joy of spring flowers that are amazing in the desert. We know that every beginning is a new beginning and every ending begins anew. So thank you for Steve and Ellen for the light of your love that has been with us in them and continues to shine wherever they go. Thank you for this congregation, God, that brought us all together to praise your name, to come to know you more deeply in Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Thank you for the Christmas season when we get to celebrate your love that's with us all the time. Emmanuel, right here, you with us. And thank you for the morning of the resurrection when we are reminded that nothing will ever separate us from your love in this Jesus, our Lord. And thank you, God, for forgiving us. Because sometimes we forget to even say thank you to you. And our lives are not how they could be. Teach us through your spirit during this time together how to be more faithful so that our living is a true reflection of your loving and the world will know the light of your grace in Jesus Christ even in us and come to that light as we do. To you, God, be all honor and glory now and forevermore. Amen. We do thank you all for being with us, for your incredible generosity to the life, the ministry, and the mission of this church.
During this time of offering, as we give God thanks through these, these givings, we invite you to sign in on those red guest books that are somewhere in your pews and pass them back and forth. Make sure you know who's with you and greet them after worship. And be a part of this offering in whatever ways are right for you. Lord our God, gathered around the table where we see your gifts for us. We come to offer ours to you. To be a part of the work that you've called us all to be a part of. To share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ in so many different ways. We seek a blessing on this offering. May these gifts of money be used in this world to bring people to you to bring peace to all, and to meet the needs of those who are in need. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of that, God. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. So during my sabbatical time last year, it was so last year, right? <laughs> I had this whole plan in January of uh, preaching a series on what I call hashtag the other 167, looking at our lives and how we can deepen our relationships with God and Jesus Christ. And then Pastor Brownson confirmed that he would be retiring at the end of the year and leaving with his fifth wheel and his wife uh, and his two dogs um, and going to travel to Quartzsite.
And if that wasn't exciting enough, after a few days in Quartzsite, they're going to Yuma. <laughs> and if that isn't the topping on the cake, they're going to Sierra Vista for a while. <laughs> Family's excited about that. And then long about February, they're heading east. And they don't know where exactly all they're going, but where it's as close to 80 and sunshine, that's probably where you'll find them. Um, and they're going to have this wonderful, wonderful life and wonderful trip. I guess going to Quartzsite and Yuma and Sierra Vista is what you do when you're retired and have a fifth wheel. And <laughs> they'll be together uh, and they will have a well-deserved retirement uh, Pastor Brownson has worked way more hours than he was supposed to over the years we've increased his hours uh, to somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 or plus hours a week is what's expected um, Pastor Brownson is dyslexic and worked at least 52 <laughs> hours a week uh, most every week and has shared with us the incredible relationship with God that he has through Jesus the Christ over the years. And we have been blessed. So, um, with all the things that we want to say about Pastor Brownson, I realized there was no time for the Word of God today, <laughs> that um, clearly Steve and his retirement were far more important. So we'll forego the hashtag the other 167 today and you'll get a double dose next week, okay? But we want to take time to honor Steve and to thank Steve and Ellen for all they have come to mean to us and all they have done on our behalf with God over these years. And there are a few people that we've asked to speak today to share with you some stories about Steve and some of our gratitude. They are from folks on the personnel team who... Um, have over the years reviewed his work. Now I can tell you, in my 22 and a half years here as head of staff, there's only been one person who has never, ever had anything negative in a review said about him. And that's him, Pastor Steve Brownson. Notice I said he's the only one that never had anything negative said about him. Because <laughs> they have a lot to learn yet. <laughs> but on behalf of your personnel team, let me introduce to you Debbie Anderson. Good morning. Good morning, Steve. I had a call from Tracy Cousins a couple weeks ago and said, we're going to roast Steve Brownson in worship at his, his uh, retirement honorary. And she said, would you be one of the speakers? I said, sure, I can do that. <laughs> oh boy. And she said, no, no, it has to be nice. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> and then I got thinking about it and I thought, I couldn't come up with anything that wasn't nice anyway, so I just wanted to share with you probably what all of you already know, uh, that he's just an amazing person. He's kind. He's compassionate. Uh, I called him a Boy Scout this morning in, in the first service. I said, he's, he's just just wonderful, and he is always there to help. One of my favorite memories as being on staff uh, with Steve was, we both like to eat. <laughs> so I always had a lunch buddy. I'd say, oh, I'm gonna bring my lunch tomorrow. And he'd come in the office about lunchtime and he'd say, did you bring your lunch? I said, yeah, where are we going? <laughs> and usually he said, I'm driving, so you pick the place. <laughs> we, we drove around sometimes without <laughs> knowing right where we were going. It was my honor to witness Steve's ministry when I was uh, on staff. Uh, 
he just amazed me. He was always available, no matter how busy he was, no matter what he had on his schedule. If somebody came to the door or somebody called on the phone, he was there. It didn't matter if it was someone he knew or a stranger off the street. He'd go sit down and talk with them and pray with them and lead them to the resources that they needed if they needed some help. He's just, that's just him. He's, it's just his heart. And it, it just, I never heard him say no. If anybody needed anything, they'd call or come to the office. He never said no. Sure, I can do that. Sure, I can do that. He even went grocery shopping for somebody one day. And he's taken people to the hospital, and he's taken people to doctor's offices. Way far above and beyond um, his job description. So I just want to say thank you um, for all of the wonderful memories you've given me, all the wonderful things that I've seen you give to other people and share God's love just is amazing. So consider yourself roasted. <laughs> You're very roasted. Well done. Well done, Steve. Also from our personnel team, Janet Rowe. Well, this is going to be somewhat redundant because Debbie and I never spoke about what we were going to say today. Well, actually, I didn't know she was speaking today. And our words are very similar on how we have seen Steve. And one thing I would add is I do believe the word of the Lord has spoken today. It has reiterated the call that Steve received years ago to pursue becoming a commissioned lay pastor. That's what it was called at that time. He answered that call, and now we celebrate the call as it was shared with us. So, my roast is really a toast. My first encounter with Steve was over 20 years ago. Mike and I walked into the office of his cardiac surgeon for a follow-up appointment after um, a quadruple bypass. Well, that was pretty dramatic time, stressful, but guess who was there? Steve Brownson. He took such good care of us, and we discovered in that interaction that we were going to the same church, and then our friendship began. His service here has truly been amazing. As a commissioned ruling elder, as a pastoral associate, here in CPC, he has gone above and beyond all expectations that we had. And at the same time, much of what he did was carried on at the same time he had presbytery duties. No matter what each day brought Steve over these years, he met those calls with grace, good humor, compassion, and a zeal for the task and warmth to whomever needed it. He served in many capacities in Presbytery, and the one I benefited from probably the most was when he was stated clerk. During that time, I had a tenure as moderator. At those meetings, there's a lot to do and to keep track of. So Steve scripted for me what I needed to make sure I got done. And when I was uh, slipping a little or getting stuck, he bailed me out, and I'm forever grateful. So now we get to turn that around, and let's hope his truck doesn't get as stuck as I did. <laughs> Steve is well-loved and respected in every capacity in which he has served. Your wit, Steve, your humor, your incredible patience with the sometimes really rigorous demands on you and your time, as well as the bureaucracies of Presbytery, all that has always been appreciated. 
I contacted Sue Westfall, who was the former Presbytery executive here in De Cristo, and here's what she said about Steve. I don't have a standout individual memory, but every time he was called upon, he was willing and able to accomplish whatever he was asked to do, whatever that task was, with energy, intelligence, imagination, and always with love. Teamwork. Both these Steves demonstrate their capacity for teamwork. This illustration I found explains it well. Many years ago, the Atlantic Monthly told about superstar tenors Jose Carreras, Placido Domingo, and Luciano Pavarotti performing together when they were in Los Angeles. A reporter tried to press the issue of competitiveness between these three men. Domingo said, you have to put all of your concentration into opening your heart to your music. You can't be rivals when you're together making music. And that, my friends, is so true for we, the church. Dr. Seuss would say the following, I believe. Congratulations, Steve. Today is your day. You're off to great places. <laughs> your transport and Ellen are waiting. So get on your way. Vaya con Dios. Our elder leading us in our personnel team is Tracy Cousins. Good morning. Um, I've been on personnel team for about 14 years, so I've been gifted with doing almost every personnel review with Steve, and there's never been a complaint, as Steve said. It's been, he's been the greatest employee. Um, we have, the congregation um, had been asked in probably the first part of December, uh, let them know that Steve was going to be leaving. And so the congregation has done a magnificent job of um, gifting Steve with some money. You want to come up here? So we have a check for him. $11,700 that this church and congregation have donated. And this morning, another check came in for $3,300. So Steve has now er, $15,000 for gas money. We also have another gift for Steve. I'll take that check. Okay. <laughs> um, as you know, they're going off, and um, Ellen has a blog for their travels, and it's called RV There Yet. So we thought that they both could use. You want to come up, Ellen? Try your hat on. It, it says RV there yet on the front, and then on the back, it's the CPC logo. Lo logo. Yeah, logo. Yeah. So let's crown Ellen. I have to open hers wide. She's got lots of hair. <laughs> So, may your journey be filled with wonder, excitement, love, laughter, and abundant blessings. Thank you.
And on behalf of your prayer shawl team, uh, they have knitted some very special prayer shawls for the two of you to have, to sit in your rocker outside your fifth wheel. <laughs> In Quartzite. <laughs> and to know that we wrap you with our deepest prayers and our, I won't look that way, our, our greatest love, the two of you are incredible gifts to us. And we thank you for all that you've meant. Sit down for a second, I have a few things to say, <laughs> as you might guess. The others are right. Steve Brownson knows only one answer to the question. And that answer is yes. Or some form thereof. Right as Steve was coming on staff, I decided to get pneumonia right before Christmas. And I was really sick and couldn't move out of my home. And I had to call Steve and say, can you just take over? <laughs> yes. And he made it happen. Throughout my ministry here, this man has been at my side and in my heart and with my spirit. And he always says, yes, Steve, do you think we can put up a screen in the sanctuary and use projection? Yes. You think you can figure out the sound system? Yes. Steve, my grandson's being born today, an hour before their wedding that I was supposed to leave. Can you step in and lead their wedding? Yes. Every time, Steve says, yes. And he has taught me what it means to be a disciple of God and Jesus the Christ. Now, most of the time, I have to teach people to say no. I get that. There are places where we do that. But Jesus walked up to disciples and said, hey, come follow me. And some of them didn't. But those who said yes are the ones who made a world of difference in the lives of all of us as people of faith for generations. And Steve, because of your, your constant yes, my life is better. And my relationship with God through Christ is deeper. And I pray for the day of my retirement, too. <laughs> 13 years from now. <laughs> Somebody said to me this morning, um, you're not retiring soon, are you? I said, well, you might want to start praying that I don't w ever win the lottery. So far, they're, so far, they're winning. <laughs> Steve and Ellen, you have made an indelible mark on this congregation. As members of this church for over 21 years, the two of you have taught us what it means to follow God in Jesus the Christ. You are absolute living examples of the faith. And there's no better sermon than that. And Ellen, your joy and the laughter that you have brought to this congregation will echo in these walls, in these rooms, and in our hearts for years to come, or at least until November when you guys come back because that's what snowbirds do, right? And that's what they're going to be. And so that's a gift. We get to see Steve and Ellen again, uh, but they won't be on staff. You're not to call Steve in the middle of the night and tell him you've got a problem. You're to call me in the middle of the night and tell me you've got a problem. Okay? Uh, you're to honor his retirement reluctantly. Because, as you might guess, I lose not only a colleague in ministry, I lose a really good friend who is here all the time with me and gets me through some of your stuff. <laughs> I meant my stuff. <laughs> um, and we thank you. 
we know God is real. And I know God's love in Jesus Christ is true because of you. And I thank you for that. Many blessings on your retirement. Amen. Come on forward. Let's thank this man. No, it's not time to go home yet. Sit back down. So when Pastor Melody told me that he was not going to do a sermon today, I went home and wrote one. <laughs> I apologize to you for that, but um, actually just a, a few things that I want to say um, because you all mean so much to me. I do have my family here. I want to recognize them. Um, the one for silver here is my sister, Christine. <laughs> Her husband, Mike, is not with us. I'm assuming he's at home mourning the loss of the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, I am vacuuming, yeah, because we're going to their house afterwards. So um, her youngest daughter is Annie, sitting in the same pew. And Annie's three boys, Dean, Dexter, and Grayson, are with them. And I guess Blaine is at home mourning as well. I'm not sure working or something like that. Somebody's got to. And in the pew in front of them is my son, Sean. Wave your hand so they know. And his wife, Heather, and my two youngest grandchildren, Sasha and Dean. And then a cousin by marriage, Jason, who actually is Heather's cousin, but he's as as much a part of the family as, as anybody, so... And they, see what I had to do to get into church here on Sunday? (laughs) Actually, they're all very, very busy, and they go to their own churches. But um, last month in December, we uh, had our men's breakfast, as we do each month. And Pastor Melody asked the men if there was any time in our lives that we truly knew that God was speaking to us. And it was very easy and it came very quickly to me a time that I knew God was speaking to me. Uh, It had happened about 14 years ago and I was serving as an elder on session at the time and we were in a session meeting and Pastor Melody made the announcement that the Presbytery was going to implement a new program, one through, that the Presbyterian Church as a whole had, but had not been active in the Presbytery at the time, but we could now uh, ordain, or not ordain, but commission people, elders, to serve as commissioned lay pastors. And at that moment, God spoke to me, as clearly as, as I heard Steve Melody, where did he go anyway? <laughs> as clearly as he spoke to us this morning. Um, God said, I want you to become a pastor and you will serve at Christ Presbyterian Church as a pastor. And I knew at that moment that that's what would happen. I have no idea why um, God called me to this. I had never had any aspirations of being a pastor before. Well, maybe once. I grew up in the Catholic Church, and I thought maybe one day I would become a priest. But then I that dismissed that very quickly because I like girls too much, and I knew that that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> and I meant that I was going to get married. That's what I meant by that. So <laughs> let's clarify that. With the Catholic Church these days, it's hard to know what's right. <laughs> My sister was actually a nun for six months, I think, right? <laughs> okay. 
But I knew that God was calling me to be a pastor, and so I began the journey of doing that. Um, I began by asking other people, like Pastor Melody and the other elders, do you think this is really what God is asking me to do? Because I, it was so clear to me, but, you know, I, I wanted to confirm that with other people, and everybody said, yeah. So I started studying, and it took two years to study and prepare to become a lay pastor, and... And at the time, we had a parish associate here, many of you know, Reverend Dorothy Buchanan Barrow, and she was Pastor Melody's uh, assistant at that time. She would go out and do the visitations and preach for him when he was away and, and whatever else he needed that she could do. And so there was really no reason to think that there was an opening here at Christ Presbyterian Church for me. But after two years... Um, as I was finishing up my training, uh, Emmanuel called me up and said, would you come and work for us for a, little, you know, for a while? So I did. I went over there and did some visitations. I met some of you over there and, for the first time. And, um, and then, as, just as I was finishing my training, I got a call from the presbytery asking me to go to St. John on the Desert to be an uh, interim pastor there as they were finishing up the time that they were calling a new pastor uh, to, to install. And I met many of you people there for the first time. And so I worked there for about five months. And then, as that was finishing up, I got a call from the personnel committee here at Christ Presbyterian Church to say that Reverend Dorothy Buchanan Barrow decided she was time, it was time for her to retire. And would you be willing to consider coming here to work as a pastoral assistant and of course what could I say God had already told me that's where I was coming so you know when God says it you do it right and so here I am and I've been here for 12 years and I've come to know and to love every one of you that I've come to know and to love there's a few of you here I don't really know yet and I apologize if you're here for the first time that this is what you're getting but you know <laughs> come back next week you'll get a great sermon on the other 167. <laughs> but it's been an amazing journey for me. And it's been the best job for me. And I've come to love each and every one of you in such a special way. And especially that man back there, um, Pastor Melody, who has been my pastor for the last 20 some years that I've been here. And, but then he became my mentor and then my boss, and through it all, a dear, dear, dear friend. And um, it's just been wonderful. But I guess it's time to, to move on into new things. If you were here for Christmas Eve for the nine o'clock service, you will remember that I got up after the service Pastor Melody asked me to help do the benediction, and I got up and I said, this is my last Christmas, and then I was froze. I just couldn't speak anymore. And he had to come up and bail me out and say, not his last Christmas, just here at Christ Presbyterian Church. <laughs> so from that point on, I've been praying diligently that God would keep my emotions in check. Well, if you had been at the first service, you could see that God did not answer that prayer. <laughs> because I was a bubbling idiot at, the, at that service. But I think I would have became so emotionally exhausted that I, there are no tears left, but you all mean so much to me. And it's hard to leave. I guess there are more tears. But we'll, we'll be back, as Pastor Melody said. Um, we'll be back in the fall. We're going to be snowbirds. And if it hadn't been for him, none of this would be going on. We would have just packed up the trailer and jumped in the truck and ridden off into the sunset, you know, to Quartzsite. And <laughs> I wouldn't have to be going through this. But, but I thank all of you for your love and your support and your patience, especially through all the sermons that I put you through. I know it's hard to sit through many of them. I know because I had to endure it myself, so. <laughs> But thank you all for all that you've done for me and for us. And thank you for becoming my family as much as my family is my family is. So 
Uh, and I don't think we can have worship without God's word, in spite of what Pastor Melody said. So <laughs> as we enter into a time of prayer and then come to the table, I have one scripture I would like to read to you. is from the 11th, gospel, 11th chapter of Matthew's gospel. And Jesus had been teaching his disciples about what it was going to be like for them if they became his followers or at, because they were his followers. That there would be persecutions and, and hard times and that people would ridicule them and persecute them and, and even worse. And that when they went to certain cities and they mistreated their, his disciples that they would be considered even worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. And as he finished up all of that bad news, then he came to this. And at that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have re revealed them to the infants. That's us. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all of you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the Son of Almighty God who came to this earth to teach us how, about the love of Almighty God for each and every one of us and to take our burdens upon himself as he went to the cross. Keep that in your mind as we enter into a time of prayer. Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, you are an amazing Lord, an amazing Father, an amazing God. And we give you thanks for your constant presence in our lives for your unconditional love for us even in spite of what we do and to whom we do it and we thank you for your many blessings and your many mercies for your forgiveness over and over and over again and we know we can come to you at all times, for all problems, for all joys, because you are always with us. No matter where we go, you are always there with us. And we can turn to you and ask for your help. So today, Lord, we pray as a community of faith for those who are truly in need. We pray for those who are struggling with illness, and diseases such as cancer. We pray for those with migraine headaches. We pray for those that are suffering the pain of arthritis in their joints. And we ask for your healing for each and every one who is struggling with physical and emotional and spiritual health ills and pray that you provide the health that they need, the healing that they need. We pray for those who are struggling financially, especially in these days, and ask that you give them the strength and the courage and the wherewithal to keep going to, and to meet the needs that they have for their families. We pray for our leaders, O oh Lord. Soften their hearts as they debate and help them to see how to lead. And Lord, we give you thanks for all that you do for us. 
In the name of your Son and our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray his special prayer as we listen to it now in music. temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the tears. You come to the table. It's not my table. It's not Steve Melody's table. It's not Christ Presbyterian Church's table. It's the table of Jesus Christ. Who invites all of us to come and to participate in this meal. So I invite the communion servers to come down and to join me. come to this table we remember what Jesus Christ did for us for on the night that he was betrayed he gathered with his disciples around the table and he took the bread and he gave thanks and then he broke it and he gave it to each of his disciples saying this is my body given for you take and eat
body of Christ becomes the bread of life. When they had completed their meal, Jesus took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for the forgiveness of sins. Take all of you and drink. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death.
Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you for what you've done for us and how we remember it through this meal. You are an amazing God. You have created an amazing church here at Christ Presbyterian filled with amazing people. None of us perfect, but all of us loving you. And I ask for your blessing upon this, this church, upon this pastor, upon the staff, the elders, the deacons, and all of the members. No matter what their status, just Fill each with your peace and your presence and your love. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And now may we close our service with a song from our choir. I want to take a moment just to thank Catherine and Katie and all of the other staff members of Christ Presbyterian Church for all that you've done for me and with me over the years. Catherine and I have this joke that whenever Pastor Melody was gone, it was the B team who was in charge here. So, uh, <laughs> And she's always been a big part of my B team. So, um, I think that's enough. May you leave this place knowing the love of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And as you leave, go in peace and share that peace with one another here today and with everyone you meet from here until eternity. Go in peace. 
Amen.